Hey, hey, hey. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you on this Wednesday morning. Thanks for tuning in to Jesus Time. We're going to be jumping into a new book today. Well, letter, more appropriately, I guess. And this one really is a falling into the letter category even more than most because this is just a real personal letter from Paul to a friend of his, uh, Philemon, that he knew in the church in Colossia, uh, in Colossae, and uh, the Colossian church. There's the right way to say that. And uh, and so this book is Paul um, writing to a friend in a church that really uh, met in his house. So this um, there may have been multiple house churches in Colossae, but uh, this particular one, and I think probably the main church there, uh, met in Philemon's house. And he was a man of some uh, wealth and authority and influence, um, and also someone Paul had come to know when he was uh, traveling through um Asia and uh, Asia Minor, the area above uh, the Mediterranean Sea. And so Colossae is kind of on uh, about central as far as north-south. And then it's more on the western side of what is modern-day Turkey. Um, this letter is written by Paul, and he is in Rome uh, in uh under house arrest, um, arrested there. And so it's about 80, 60 approximately when he writes this letter. It's about the same time that he writes the letter to the church in uh, Colossae, the, the book of Colossians. And it's also about the same time that he writes the church, the book to the church in uh, uh, Ephesus. And so Ephesians, Colossians, and Philemon are all written by Paul um, Two of them are written to the whole church in Ephesus and um, Colossae. And then one is written as a real personal letter to um, Philemon. And so that's the one we're going to start unpacking today. And we're going to see that Paul is doing something super radical. Um, it's not radical. It's not a like departure from God. Uh, and God's plan and what God's always uh, uh, presented, but it's a radical departure from the norms of the culture um, when it comes to lobbying for the equality and freedom of a slave, uh, particularly even a slave who had um, broken the law. And so not only is he lobbying for, it's not even just that he's lobbying for leniency, for uh, Onesimus, this slave, he, it's not leniency. He's lobbying for freedom. So like absolve him of his crimes. He offers to pay restitution, we'll see. Paul does, if there was anything that was a loss. And he, so he offers to square it up with Philemon. But he's, he's, not, only off, he's not only lobbying that Onesimus would be forgiven. Um, he's actually lobbying that that he would be um, uh, received as a brother in Christ. So like he left a runaway slave, but I'm sending him back to you. And, and my heart's desire is that not only would you forgive him, but you would no longer see him as a slave, that you would see him as a brother in Christ. Because, you know, Paul says other times to the church in Colossia too, like uh, that, the, one of the things that all believers need to remember is like all of us are slaves to Christ. We all have a, a master uh, in our father. And so we answer to God as our master. And so like, let's look at each other as brothers and sisters under the authority of Christ and treat each other literally quite literally as equals in the family of God. And so that he, he's doing something pretty radical in writing this letter to um, not only ask for freedom, but ask for equal standing in the local church, in his household, in society, for a, a guy that was a, a runaway slave 
uh, and either took some money with them or maybe they just lost wages and that's the restitution Paul offers. It's hard to say. But we're going to pray and we're going to dig into it. I think we're just going to do uh, today, we're going to do, it's, it's, there's only one, uh, it's, not, it's not chapters, it's just one letter and it's real short. So I think we're just going to do uh, starting in verse 1 and go through verse 12 and kind of just tackle the front part of this uh, letter today. So let me pray and let's dive into this awesome little story, this awesome little letter that Paul writes. Man, Lord, we love you. I just thank you so much for your word. I just pray that you would um, keep teaching us, keep shaping our hearts, keep uh, bringing us back to the radical truth that uh, you are a God for everybody, that there, there are not race lines in your family. There aren't um, social lines in your family. There's not um, wealth lines in your family. There's not gender lines in your family. It's not about how much money you have, what color your skin is, if you're a guy, a girl, a kid, um, where you came from out of a gang or from uh, Ivy League school, that uh, you're a God for everyone. And when people put their faith and trust in you that we become family and um, just like our own physical families god we don't get to pick who our brother or sister is um we uh, likewise that's what happens in the family of fam. and so how do we love each other well and see each other as equals and so i just pray you teach us as we're digging into this little letter and and just uh Keep shaping our hearts and our minds. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So let's jump in here. Let me get some reading goggles on so I can see this thing here. All right. So let's look at Philemon. Here we go. Um, this letter is from Paul, a prisoner for preaching the good news to Christ Jesus and from our brother Timothy. I'm writing to Philemon, our beloved co-worker and our sister Aphia, and to our fellow soldier, Archi Archippus? Sure. Archie. Sounds like a good version of it for me. Uh, and also to the church that meets in your house. So he's, he's writing to Philemon and the church that meets in his house. He also addresses the, a sister, Aphia, which is uh, another lady in the church, uh, perhaps a relative of Philemon's. And then also to Archie, which it's speculated, I read, that it could have been uh, his uh, Philemon's son. It could have been another possible elder in the church. But it's interesting that Paul purposely, so he's writing a personal letter to uh, Philemon, but he includes a couple of like close confidants, probably people that were close friends to Philemon. And it's, it's a, a way of Paul making sure that more than just Philemon saw this letter. A couple of people that probably he trusted and knew would give him good counsel also were addressed and so would have had the right to read this letter. So it's just kind of interesting that it's a really personal letter, but he includes those other names. Okay, so verse 3. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. I always thank my God when I pray for you, Philemon, because I keep hearing about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people. And I'm praying that you will put into action the generosity that comes from your faith as you understand and experience all the good things that we have in Christ. Your love has given me much joy and comfort, my brother, for your kindness has often refreshed the hearts of God's people. That is why I am boldly asking a favor of you. I could demand it in the name of Christ, but because uh, I could demand it in the name of Christ because it is the right thing for you to do. So he's he starts off by saying, "Listen, you're awesome. You're an amazing guy. I pray for you often. I think about all the ways that you have treated people, the the blessing you've been to the church and to the family of faith. Um, you know, and he's just affirming him, just like right out of the gate." Here's all the things I recall about you that you're doing right and what a blessing you are to the church. And he's like, I just want you to know I'm going to ask a pretty, I'm teeing you up. I'm about to ask a pretty bold favor. This is a pretty radical thing I'm about to ask you. And then he goes on to say, 
I because of he's like saying because of my authority as an apostle and because I brought the gospel to you like I could just demand that you do what I tell you to do because it's the right thing to do but I'm not gonna do that right so he's like I'm gonna ask you a radical favor and I probably could just tell you you have to do it and then he goes on to explain how he's gonna kind of come at it a different way so verse 9 but because of our love I prefer simply to ask you, consider this as a request from me, Paul, an old man and now a prisoner for the sake of Christ Jesus. I appeal to you to show kindness to my child Onesimus. I became his father in the faith while here in prison. Onesimus hasn't been, much, uh, hasn't been of much use to you in the past, but now he is very useful to both of us. I am sending him back to you, and with him comes my own heart. Um, and so I'm just going to stop there for today. So, so Paul is writing this letter, and as he's writing the letter, he's addressed in Philemon. He's getting his attention. Like, listen, you know, he, he like includes a couple other people in his address, and then he opens up by telling Philemon all the things that he's doing right and all the reasons that. He prays for him, loves him, and then he says, I'm going to ask you to do something pretty crazy. Like, I'm going to ask you to do something pretty radical. I've got, like, I'm getting you ready. Like, I got a bold ask coming. Um, and it's the kind of thing that when it comes to kingdom, uh, right and wrong, it's right in the kingdom. It's right in God's eyes. Like, I could just say, do it because it is the right thing to do but because I love you because we have a relationship I would rather just present this request to you and so then he goes on to say like it's sort of the cats coming out of the bag like okay so here's what it's all about the deal is uh, Onesimus and so right away that all that just him coming into the, the letter means something um, Onesimus was a slave that belonged to Philemon um, and he was a runaway slave and so he had made his way all the way to rome um found uh paul somehow who knows it, it, is there you have no idea was he looking for paul on purpose did he just end up there and one thing led to another and somehow he heard paul speak uh, nobody knows right and so he ends up interacting with paul paul leads him to faith in christ and they develop this relationship and paul you can tell from the way he talks about him like he he's here's a uh a, a man who was a runaway probably younger uh he was a slave his life wasn't his own he had nothing he was completely destitute trying to figure out how to like not get caught not get turned in paul takes him under his wing and immediately he has this softness of heart for him and this this compassion for him and his circumstances and something about the way that they got along they just really clicked because Paul immediately just talks about him like a father and uh, has this genuine love for him and so they obviously developed a pretty neat relationship uh, over whatever uh, brief period of time they spent together but in the same token Paul's like there's bigger things at play here like I could just keep you hidden right like I could just do this but there's bigger things at play like it's right that the church and the leaders of the early church these first Christians it's right that they understand this isn't the right way right like this isn't the right way to see people to treat people like I want you to consider doing something radically different and it's almost like he's using Onesimus as a a case study as an example of like hey when when a slave comes to Christ and becomes a, a believer uh, you both have a master he goes on to talk about that in, Col in uh, Colossians too so he's kind of teeing them all up right and so that's where this letter starts off it's pretty radical uh, stuff for the day um, and uh, and pretty exciting it's uh, really uh really cool stuff i'm trying to jump into my other uh, uh facebook here and see if i can see who's tuning in with us this morning give a couple of shout outs to see who do we have dialed in which there we go 
Do, do, do. Boy, slow internet in the world today. So, let me switch gears and go here because uh, cause that does not want to work for me. So, as always, if you're watching, make sure you let us know where you're watching from. Um, we'd love to love to hear where you're watching from how you got tuned in and if you're watching uh, on Facebook we'd love for you to pop it open in your news feed drop some comments share some thoughts um, we do a lot of um, getting to know each other in the comments too and so there's a lot of relationship and connection of different people that maybe didn't even know each other but they're drawn to a person because they see sort of the the things that they write each day and they're like man I think I relate to that person and then one thing leads to another and they're messaging each other we're praying for each other and so even if there's just something that's going on in your life you'll notice that this family that's kind of rallying around getting into God's Word every morning starts to uh, share their comments and they pray for each other. So we got people like super short stuff, Kelsey, who's in Pullman this week. She's watching. We got Miss Linda Tippett and she's watching and Robin is watching and Jana and uh, Eads is watching and maybe some of her littles and she's out in uh, Oaksdale area. And we got uh, Cheryl who's watching out uh, near Colfax and Linda up in uh, Post Falls, Coeur d'Alene. Uh, short stuff is here in Pullman and we've got uh, Zach and Daisy here in town and Carrie here in town and then people watching up north in Coeur d'Alene and people watching in Missouri and California and throughout Canada all over the place so wherever you're watching from let us know if there's anything we can be praying about or encouraging each other on uh, share it in the comments and I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to jump in the comments and visit with you a little bit before I get going on my day today. So let's pray, and we'll get you running. Man, God, I love you. Thank you so much for your word. Pray that you would continue to just teach us, shape our hearts to become more and more like you. Um, help, help us to just be able to look as outsiders, distant outsiders, at a personal letter that uh, Paul wrote to a friend and church leader hoping to not only just change the way this particular guy thought about slavery and thought about brothers and sisters in Christ, but I think real strategically wrote it so that um, it would begin to shape how the church thought differently moving forward. And so, um, Lord, there's been lots and lots of mistakes made in this area, horrible stuff. and. For, for our slice of time, for those of us now that are in the Word, that are reading, that are following you, I just pray that we could live our faith in such a way that uh, it, we just so sync up with your heart and your plan um, that for us, we could um, live out our faith well. Um, God, so that we represent you um, and your heart for people um, as accurately as, as we possibly can. And so, Lord, we love you. Just pray you be with us this day. Just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You guys have a fabulous